Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another episode in the what if crazy world of 1 in 72 Madagascar. Firstly, thank you for everyone that's voted on the camouflage schemes for the Vulcans. This is Vulcan number one of a trio of Vulcans. This is Whiskey, or W, for the Walrus was Paul. This is the first one I've built. I'm going to build one as a modern Vulcan, which has gone back into service this year due to rising global tension. This one is the 1974 fit. You can tell that because it's got radar warning receivers on the tail. And then I'm building another one in a slightly earlier period, which will be in Southeast Asia over black camouflage. So thank you for everyone who's voted in the poll. This was the most popular option. And having secured another two of these old Airfix kits, I've already made a start. 1950s was one incredible decade. Not only was it the decade when my granddad was probably irradiating himself with radioactive isotopes in a lab, but it was the decade when my mum and dad were born and were learning to walk and crawl around. So how did Madagascar end up with this fine product of British aeronautical engineering? Well, at the time, there was an obsession with something called the domino theory. What that was, was that if one country fell to the USSR or CCCP, every other country would fall, irrespective of oceans, irrespective of the geopolitical situation. The domino theory was in sway. So let's look at Madagascar. Madagascar is here in this badly drawn map off the coast of Africa. The USSR is pushing down. The USSR is pushing into Southeast Asia. Madagascar joins the CETO organization, which is like the NATO suicide club, but not as strong. And they can't get nuclear weapons because at that time it was a big no-no. So they developed a theory of conventional deterrence, which is basically in order to attack Madagascar, you've either got to cross the sea or you've got to build bases in Africa. So the Vulcan and Valiant, they never got the victor, provided the Madagascans with conventional deterrent. Nothing says don't build an airbase like the capability to drop 21 bombs on the runway or near the runway. So that's how the Madagascans, fueled by their recent oil find in the late 50s, got the Vulcan. This is a Vulcan B2. You can tell that because it's got the tailpipes of the Olympus 201 engines. Now this Vulcan is the old Airfix kit. It came partially built. My dad brought it for some reason and then gave it to me. And he's having a very nice, accurate model made by a former colleague of mine who's retired called Matt. Matt is making a lovely model of a B2 from the new Airfix kit in the overall white REF scheme. This one had the Wolfpack resin conversion, which supplies you with the radar warning receiver. This, which is the ECM, effectively pod, the parachute pod and the Olympus 201 nozzles. I didn't realise these were only used on the B2 and the B2A had the Olympus 301 engines, but there we go. So this is the old Airfix kit. I was a bit worried about how it would build and I think it builds quite nicely. So I've managed to secure two more of these for the same price as one of the new Airfix kits. And yes, I am aware it's not as accurate as the new Airfix kit. So if we flip this over, and Matt has also lent me some airbrush equipment. And this is the first time since I was about 17 or 18 that I've actually used an airbrush because the expanse of grey is so massive. So the Wolfpack kit comes with the Red Shrimp ECM, which is here on that plate. And then I've added the Airfix plate here. The Airfix kit does come with some Skybolt pylons to which I've added an ANALQ 101 jamming pod as that would have been in service by this period. 
and I painted it with a black ray dome for the ray dome area and I've tried to detail it as best as possible. Now the Airfix kit, this old kit, does have raised panel lines which is a bit of a shame. However, I've done the best that I can with it. I did airbrush this grey and um, I will be airbrushing most of my future models now. It's actually a really good way of building them, especially when you've got an expanse of grey like this. I've had to hand paint some of the details myself because I've got no transfers for this kit. Like I said, it was partially built. But there we go. There is a Vulcan number one. This is Whiskey for the Walrus is Paul. And this is the first of three Vulcans which I will be building. Again, I really appreciate everyone taking the time to view these videos and indulging in this what if craziness. This has got the corrected Madagascan roundels with the white centres. When they wanted to go low vis, they just left out the white centres. The Airfix kit needs a ton of weight at the front, otherwise, it becomes a tail sitter. So it's got about £1.50's worth of 5p's in there stuck together with blue tack. The weakness of the Airfix kit, and that tells me the new kit is also weak in this area, is these intakes. Very difficult to get a nice seamless intake. I've done the best that I can with putty, but it's not perfect. Weirdly, the Airfix uh, Vulcans um, come with late Vulcan equipment. So these ones come with a 301 engines. And they do come with a, a radar warning receiver. The new world one, you have to check the kit to see what you've got. They also come with a terrain following radar here at the front, that pimple underneath there. And this therefore is from the 1974 period, just after linebacker one and two, and just before 1975's linebacker three and four. I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching and have a good day.